So this video was made for everyone that suffers from a massive sweet tooth like me. So enjoy. But before we start, you'll need the basics like a cookie sheet pan or a large flat plate, large mixing bowls, baking pans, small bowls, measuring cups, measuring spoons, and parchment paper. So the first of the five is a traditional simple cake pop. And what you'll need for these is cake mix, frosting, lollipop sticks, white chocolate melts, sprinkles, ribbon, and small foil cups. I'm using a box cake mix, so make sure you follow the directions that are listed on the box, but you can totally make your own cake bread from scratch. So I go ahead and pop my cake mix into the oven. And I only had these small cake pans, but it doesn't really matter because you're going to end up crumbling the bread. Now this is very important. You must let the bread fully cool down. I generally like to bake mine the night before so they have more than enough time to cool off. But if you can't do that, at least wait one to two hours. Now that the bread is fully cooled off, you can go ahead and remove it from the pan into a large mixing bowl. Then scoop around one and a half to two tablespoons of frosting, and that's more than enough for about an eight inch cake pan. Always put frosting a little at a time. You don't want your cake pops to be all frosty. This is the messy part. You need to crumble up the bread and mix it with the frosting. What you want to create is a dough. If your bread seems to not be sticking, add a little bit more frosting, like half a tablespoon at a time. And then when it's all mixed, this is what you wanna end up with. Now cover your cookie sheet pan or your plate with parchment paper. And taking your measuring spoons, scoop out about one and a half to two tablespoons. This is the measurement I use per cake pop. Just so you can have an idea, I used a 15.25 ounce cake mix. And if you did each cake pop to be a tablespoon, you can get around 50 cake pops, or 25 cake pops if they're each gonna be two tablespoons. Again, this is a rough estimate just so you have an idea. After you have used all of your mix, you can start by mashing it together, and then you start rolling it into your palms to create a smooth ball. If it keeps breaking or creating large cracks, it means that your mix is a bit too dry and it needs more frosting. Now, to make your dipping chocolate, pour around one to two cups of chocolate melts into a microwavable bowl. So the first interval is a set of 30 seconds and afterwards take it out and stir. The chocolate melts there would still be hard, so don't worry about it. Then pop the bowl back in for the second interval of 30 seconds. When you take them out, this time stir. They'll look solid, but they will be partially melted and then put it back in for the third and final interval of 30 seconds. This time when you stir it, it should be completely melted. Give it some good stirs to make sure there's no lumps. Now that your dipping chocolate is ready, take one end of a lollipop stick into the chocolate 
and poke it into the cake ball. Don't poke it too far in because you don't want it coming out through the other side. Now that the chocolate has hardened, I can thin out the chocolate in the bowl with some Crisco so that the dipping is much more easier and smoother. For every two cups of chocolate, I add about half a tablespoon of Crisco, and trust me, a little goes a long way. When you start to dip, angle your bowl to make it easier, and start to gently rotate the cake pop. Once the whole cake pop is covered, gently wiggle it to help the excess chocolate drip off and keep spinning it in the meantime. If you plan to add sprinkles, add them now while the chocolate is still wet because once it hardens, they won't stick on. And trust me, this chocolate hardens pretty fast. I know this seems like a lot, but don't let it stress you out. It's all with practice. I have had so many fail moments in the past, but I've managed to learn some tips and tricks that I'll be teaching you in this video. And once the chocolate has hardened, just add a cute little bow and a mini foil cup underneath and they'll be ready to be eaten or simply just stare at them like I do. <laughs> Second batch, some heart-shaped cake pops. And what you'll need is cake mix, frosting, lollipop sticks, piping bags, or a sandwich bag. This is actually favor bags, but they look like piping bags and work just as good. White chocolate melts, pink chocolate melts, frosting tip, and a ribbon. So with your pre-made cake balls, start pinching it with your thumbs to make the bottom portion of a heart. And while you're pinching, make sure to flatten the top and bottom as well. You essentially want to end up with a teardrop shape. Once you're pretty content with the shape, take a lollipop stick and press it down the middle of the rounded end. Then with your finger, smooth out the edges to make them more rounded. Then dip one end of a stick and insert it into the heart. With these, I like for them to lay flat to allow the chocolate to harden. Once they're ready, go ahead and dip one side, then turn it over the other side and make sure to get the edges as well. And just like before, make sure to wiggle them a bit to help the excess chocolate dribble down. With these, you have to let them dry upwards. So if you don't have any styrofoam around, just use a draining bowl that has large enough holes to insert the lollipop sticks in. Now to decorate these with a piping bag, I got these favor bags that are shaped like piping bags, but are way more affordable. Anyway, simply snip off a bit of the end or you can use a small sandwich bag. Just do the same and snip off a tiny corner off. Then taking your icing tip, just push it through the open corner. And I personally like the sandwich bag better and I ended up using that way more. Go ahead 
ahead and pour a little bit of chocolate into the bag. Then twist the top and squeeze it out a bit to make sure the flow is right. For decorating, all I did was outline the edge. Then I took some pearl sprinkles and poured it over the chocolate. Then make sure you have a small bowl underneath and turn it over and gently tap it. And then you'll end up with a beautifully sprinkled outlined heart. Add a nice little bowl on the bottom and they're a great gift or even a treat for someone else. And have I told you I am in love with Hello Kitty yet? So of course, here are some Hello Kitty cake pops. To start off, what you'll need is some cake mix, frosting, heart-shaped sprinkles, mini M&Ms, piping bags or a sandwich bag, lollipop sticks, white chocolate chips, piping tips, black and yellow icing, white chocolate melts, and ribbon. Taking a pre-made cake ball, you're going to start pressing it into a rectangle, making sure the edges are still rounded. So just flatten the sides and top and bottom. chocolate dip lollipop stick and insert it. And just like with the heart pops, I like to lay these flat to dry. Then, taking two white chocolate chips, dip it into the chocolate and press them on the top of each side to end up with this. You want the chocolate chips to be dry before you start dipping. But once they're ready to go, go ahead and dip it on one side, then turn it to the other side. Do the usual spinning and wiggling to help create a smooth application. Then set these upwards to fully dry. To create the Hello Kitty bow, using a lollipop stick, Dip it into the chocolate a little, then make two dabs on the right ear, then take two of the heart-shaped sprinkles and place them over the chocolate. Then make one more dab on the center and take a red mini M&M and place it on the middle. You can keep them simple like this or you can take a risk and make your face. So using black icing in a sandwich bag as a piping bag, you create the three whiskers on each side, and then the two eyes. Then with yellow icing, create her little nose. And as a final touch, add a pink bow ribbon on the bottom. And don't worry if they don't look perfect because mine sure don't. It's the effort and thought that's put into it. Now for my favorite, the Minnie Mouse Cake Pop. What's needed for these is cake mix, frosting, lollipop sticks, milk chocolate melt, heart shaped sprinkles, pearl sprinkles, and ribbon. To create Minnie's cute ears, we take some of the unmelted chocolate melt and simply cut off one edge to make it flat. Now, with 
with an already made cake pop, dip the chocolate ears into the melted chocolate and press them gently on each end on the top. You'll have to wait for the ears to harden before you dip them, so have them standing upwards to dry. Then when they're ready, go ahead and dip it into the chocolate. And just like the rest, do the wiggle and spin. And just like Hello Kitty, take one dip stick and make two dabs between the ears. Then taking two of the heart-shaped sprinkles, place them above it. And also add a small dab in the middle and place a small pearl sprinkle to the center. These are seriously the easiest and most cutest cake pops. And for the final touch, add a black and white polka dot bow to the bottom. And for our final cake pop, the ice cream cone pop. And what's needed is cake mix, sugar cones or waffle cones, mini M&Ms, colorful sprinkles, milk chocolate melts, pink chocolate melts, and frosting. To make the small cones, just take a regular cone and cut about an inch from the top. And all you have to do is gently cut back and forth and it will crack on its own. And then you'll be left with a little baby cone. Now dip the edges into the chocolate and press it over the cake ball. Go ahead and round off the top if it got a bit squished. With these, you must let these dry before you dip. But when it's ready, just dip it into the pink chocolate. And with this one, it's fine if it drips down the cone because it'll actually look like melted ice cream. Then, while the chocolate is still wet, add sprinkles around. Then taking a spoon into the chocolate, dribble some on top. And then spin it so it can spread randomly around so it can actually look like fudge on ice cream. Then add a small red M&M to the top like a mini cherry. And I don't know about you, but these are almost too cute to even eat. And that concludes all five different kinds of cake pops. So thank you so much for watching this super long video. I'm so sorry it was so long, but I really wanted to add every detail. If you enjoyed, make sure to thumbs up to support. And here's my last two videos you can watch by clicking on them. And if you're not subscribed yet, just click on that yellow subscribe button and you'll be added instantly. So again, thanks so much for watching and until next time, bye guys.